Okay. okay, guys, we are going to get started. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Where did my attendance count go? I, I like to start when there's like 100. Oh, yeah, we got a lot of people on this call. Welcome, everyone. Don't start asking questions yet, please, because that way you can just type in where you're from, whatever. But Okay. Someone, people are still e emailing me trying to get on a call. I, I can't. I can't help you answer your emails now. It's too late. <laughs> um, but anyways, yes, folks. Uh, we are Retire in Panama Chewers. We are missing Megan tonight because she's looking after baby Noah. But yeah, little one has just got a one day. Second month vaccinations. Uh, so she's taking the one for the team. So it's Noah. He's not a happy mm -hmm. baby right now, but he is in good spirits. Thank right. you, everyone, to join tonight. Yeah. For sure. Tonight, folks, this is going to be a call all about you guys. We're going to want you to direct the call after we get going here. We have one special introduction that we will do shortly. This lovely other face we have on the screen joining us tonight. But let us first introduce ourselves. Oscar, since I'm talking, I'll go first because I'm much shorter than you are. My sure. name is Rod Larrabee. Moved to Panama 11 years ago from Vancouver, Canada. Um, never looked back. Never considered moving back. Um, I, In the beginning, I did it the wrong way. I just, you know, packed my bags and wow. said, oh, Panama bound. And got in a bit of trouble. And um, the guy sitting beside me was a total stranger, but ended up bailing me out of that trouble. Um, he was at the time already here helping expats move to Panama. That's what we do. So he got me out of the trouble I was in. Within a year, we were in business together. We've done many things. We've done local tourism. We've done, Oscar's been helping, um, doing private expat tours for 10 years now. And I've been helping him with that. And then we started Retire in Panama um, about five years ago. And we now do group tours once a month, maximum 12 people. So that is our business. We love what we do. We're here to help tonight. We're going to answer any question. Honestly, we're not here for your money unless I know a lot of you people are here because I sent out an email saying that um, um, I have, we have two spots now open and we got over 150 on our waiting list for the beginning of the year. And we're going to release those spots shortly on our website. So uh, one for February, one for March. So remind me to do that before we end the call. I will do my best. I will do my best. I will do it. Go ahead, Oscar. Tell them who you are. Everyone. Knows uh, you. Everyone, first of all, thank you again for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Oscar Peña. I am originally from Cali, Colombia. I've been here in Panama for a bit over 13 years. Uh, before Panama, I was living in Costa Rica for three years and a half, where I was uh, uh, working and I got a lot of experience in uh, hospitality and uh, hotel tourism, restaurants. So I got a good background about tourism. Here in Panama, I've been working as an expert relocator. I've been uh, working as a facilitator and have a, a lot of background doing other uh, guiding tours. Uh, safety. I used to be part of member of the civil uh, defense of Panama, uh, Protection Civil, as it called. Um, so I love this place. I am actually who does the, the field work. Here. My buddy here is what it does the tech work. I'm the one on the field, making sure all the peeps are having good time learning about Panama, learning about the culture, the, all the beautiful things about here. How's the Panama way? Uh, how to just see Panama as it is, not with the uh, any other expectations, but discovering what is the Panama for real. Uh, so I have, I'm very committed to this country, very committed to my people, my Panamanian people, and uh, transmitting the best knowledge for all of you. Um, yeah, so happy doing this job. I'm still looking for work another 40 years. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. 40 years? <laughs> hey, I don't know. I love it. So I don't know when I'm going to retire. So I'm here for you guys. Uh, for those that have been, the ones that are going to be here in the near future. So looking forward, but right on. Let's get uh, on. let's get on tonight again. It's a general call. We're going to be talking about everything. But since we're getting one in three, one in four emails and phone calls, and the topic is I need a place to live, we thought maybe we need to bring somebody on and discuss that with us. Now. Sherry is, I, I always have to look at your title because it's so long. 
She's a buyer's agent for Team Hatch with Inside Panama Real Estate. Now, Sherry has been involved in, like, when we started this company, Sherry was a rentals agent for um, Inside Panama, and now she's moved up into the real estate. But we're going to talk about both because I know Sherry has knowledge in both of those areas. Sherry is, deals in Cherokee province, mostly. Uh, we will talk about the Coronado Beaches area here also, and even a bit about the Azuero Peninsula. And But we want to get right into it because people hear so many crazy things when they're on the internet. Like, what's the market like? Oh my God, prices are 400% more or or the $400,000 home. If you offer $100,000, you're going to get it. But no, none of that is true. Neither of those are true. Right now, what I'm seeing is the market is, it's good. It, it's good for both the buyer and the seller. Um, prices have not increased significantly across the country over the last five years, especially Panama City and the beaches area. In Bocate, maybe a little bit as far as the real estate side and the rental side going. But I, I myself, I lived in Panama City in 2012 to 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, the place, the, the first place I was renting, I was paying 1150 that now rents for 900 um, You know, and that's quite a common story throughout Panama City. So if your market is Panama City, good, yeah, on, really good, good on you. you there, there are some good deals yeah. to be had there. Even in um, Coronado and Beaches area, I saw a... Um, um, studio apartment in Coronado Golf for $120,000. We haven't seen that in a few years, but those are the good deals. And But Sherry, let's start off in your expertise in the last five years in the Cherokee province. What's the um, real estate market doing here right now? It's a booming. <laughs> a booming. We're very busy. Um, lots of people are coming into town and looking around. Um, I spend a great deal of time uh, getting people in my car, showing them around, no pressure, just letting them um, see the countryside and what their dollar can buy. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty amazing, you know, like if you're an American with U.S. dollars, of course, uh, coming in and buying a, or looking at property that are about 500,000 or 500, um, 500 to 800 is pretty pretty reasonable for people coming over. There are less expensive properties, but they go very, very quickly. About 250 to 300, I find is a sweet spot where a lot of people are coming into town. They want to purchase property that they like, uh, has all the American standards, uh, but they don't want to spend a whole lot of money because they need money to uh, keep on traveling and enjoying retirement. So the 600 to 800s are moving a little bit slower, but they are an amazing properties. But we do have uh, quite a few that are, you know, within the 250s, 350s. Um, and I think um, they, they just move very quickly. So we get people in here, we show them towards the town, um, showing them different um, areas. Uh, some people are, you know, looking for gated communities. Some think that they want you know, to live off the grid. So we show them that. Um, just so many different opportunities for people, lots of investment opportunities. We have a brand new um, condo complex coming up in Boquete Country Club. Um, Pre-sales are starting at about 314 or so. So, you know, it's just, it's just a great market because there's something for everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've seen, I've seen inside Panama sales start around the 170 180 you guys sold the handicap foundation house we so did the Los Naran house, great properties mm -hmm. some people on those budget got great deals yeah. and then all the way up to a million dollars plus yeah exactly. selling right. I thought, I, I thought they, they, yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i thought the volcancito there was a beautiful charity real estate uh deal and it's yeah, still we we did really well yeah. for them. I was so pleased. Yeah. Um, I think the asking price was somewhere around 160 or something. <coughs> it ended up being in the 190s, I think. 
And yeah. everybody was so thrilled because all the money and all the proceeds of that uh, sale went to charity. Yeah. For those of you who don't know the story, a um, Bocchetti's got a great organization, the Bocchetti Handicap Association. And yeah. one of the long, long term workers um, lived in Bocchetti and worked for that organization. When she passed her way in her will, she left her home to the Handicap Foundation. So Inside Panama took it upon themselves uh commission free to take on that home and donate all their time and they got they got over asking one of the over askings that yeah, has, has happened in panama that's exciting <laughs> yeah so great. yeah so um we'll talk a little i know you you know inside panama you, you here in your meetings it's a it's a countrywide group what's it like in cornado and beaches area right now for sales and condos and stuff like that I believe, um, so I don't do, the, I personally do not do the sales yeah. out there. Um, Mike and Martha do the sales out there and they would be happy to talk to anybody. You can send me their emails and I'll uh, connect you with them. Um, yeah. Some of the condos out there are amazing deals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I like about the area is, is that there's a lot of expats there. So people that are transitioning um, will absolutely make friends really quickly it's a really great community uh and the condos that are for sale mostly come turnkey right so people have to consider that as well that they're not just paying for the condo they're paying for all the furniture and some come with pots pans knives spoons it's great yeah. so the transition is very easy for expats mm -hmm. and i found out that just in the one the, the the real estate in coronado and sometimes in Boquete. Maybe it's not even for uh, your living, for your forever home. It's actually a lot of times an investment, an asset. Because yeah. I found out a lot, a lot of experts, they bought a condo, let's per, let's per se, in Coronado, which is a very famous building in Coronado Bay. And the uh, units, they're like, they, once it's for sale, it's bought, and then six months later, maybe it's for sale again. So it's an overturn a lot, but nobody lose money. Yeah. Nobody. Because they're buying and selling, you know, yeah. at a little profit. And a lot of people they just go buy one unit, and they don't want to live in Panama. They just want to come here, maybe two months, maybe three months. I don't know. And the rest of the time they just rent it. Yeah, and exactly. Martha, um, Martha from Inside Panama takes care of that for them, mm -hmm. and uh, they purchase the property and they choose which weeks or months that they want to stay here, and otherwise it gets put into a rental pool, and mm -hmm. uh, makes money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, guys, at the end of this call, right when I end it, you're going to get a thank you email for joining the car, which will have all of Inside Panama's contact information across the country. So you can reach out for them if you're looking for your Coronado Beach rental or if you're looking to purchase property, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to reach out to them. Let's, let's move from the sales part to the rentals part. Um, people know, as you, you've known Oscar and I for years, Jerry, you know we tell our, our guests to rent for about six months once you get here before you buy. But many of them don't listen and go buy anyways. But when they do, we like to put them in the hands of somebody we trust. Yeah. Thank so you. Um, you, you're, I, I just met with our, our clients today that just arrived that you picked up last week. You know who I'm talking about. They were, over at my house. they were so happy that you were involved in that sale yes. because you just, made everything so much easier for them i couldn't and be we thank you for that yeah sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt but i i couldn't be happier uh because i saw them last week mm -hmm. and they were sure to be getting things sound like yeah. a yeah <laughs> you guys couldn't be in better hands yeah <laughs> so it's really sweet how that worked out that was a great deal for them they came they um looked at some property they wanted to have a property that had a uh some investment um potential so they bought a duplex that they live in one side and rent the other out um mm -hmm. we were able to pick them up at the airport we were able to give them some really good concierge service and you know what they're they're settling in really well yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah i'm happy for them yeah and uh, yeah and their dog for, arrived <laughs> yes and uh, how about bear eh wow yeah, <laughs> yeah bear oh, is a good, good word <laughs> Yeah. So I know we're talking a lot about, about Bolchetti here, guys. I'm going to move back into Cornado. Martha Vitovich runs Inside Panama um, Property Management. And I don't know the number. Maybe you can correct me, but it's usually around 60 to 75 units that she has under her management. And they're all for and they're all rentals. So if you're still looking for something, 
for this, you know, what you northerners call winter that we call summer um, coming up here. And she might still have something available. So her contact information will be in that email that you get right after this call. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So let's talk about the rentals market. I know you see what's going on there and what's happening because many of our guests are renting. Sam um, works for Inside Panama and she is a exclusive rentals lister. She's not a um, agent or anything. And, you know, that's that's great with this company. They have people in the rentals department that aren't trying to sell you something. And then people in the real estate that, you know, it's their job to try to find you the perfect place. So if you are looking for a rental, uh, it's a great company to contact. And they only have pristine rentals. They're not going to rent you crap. They're not going to rent you a house next to someone who has 75 chickens and not tell you about it. I had one of those phone calls today. And I, what do I do? They have 75 chickens. We try to be very transparent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so what do you like? Let's talk different areas. Let's talk about Boquete. You know it well. How easy is it to get a rental right now? So in high season, it's going to be a little bit more challenging, not saying that it can't be done. Um, a lot of people uh, don't rent cars, so they want to be close to downtown. Um, those are limited. Right now, we've yeah. got a limited market. Um, but we're always working really um, due diligently to ensure that we help as many people as we possibly can. Um, don't come thinking that you're going to find a rental tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I meet a lot of people and we put them into Airbnbs. We've got a lot of good contacts for them and they'll stay there for a week, maybe even two weeks until we can get them into a rental. Yeah. Perfect. It's kind of like that in the beaches area too, in Coronado, but get a hold of Martha and see what they have available and stuff like that. In Panama City, you'll have no problem getting a great rental for a great price in the high season because Panama City doesn't have that high season, low season thing as much as the rest of the country. No, it doesn't yeah. because right now, especially after pandemic, what happens with Panama City, a lot of people, they used to live in many condos, in many very luxury condos. Mm -hmm. They're sitting empty because a lot of people got yeah. just, okay, don't want to be here. They got fed up being stuck in the apartment for 40 days or more. Uh, months. So places that used to be rent for 2500 or 1500 Yeah. Yeah. The average Balboa two bedroom right now is $1,200, like the starter. And yeah. the average San Francisco El Congrejo is down to 800 now. Yeah. And so, so much. Options. And full furnish. Yeah. At least with a white line and basic stuff. Yeah. That means appliances. And how do you translate the word appliance to white line? I don't know. That's a Spanish phenomenon that I, I have not figured out. I have no idea. Either. White line are two English words. How do they mean appliances in Spanish? <laughs> okay. Hey, hey folks, we're going to um, get into a question mode in about two minutes here that you can directly ask Sherry some questions here. But just wait, please. Don't type it in the chat yet because I'm going to turn on the Q&A mode so we can all see the questions. Tennessee is where up Peninsula. How do you get a rental there? For a, for a home rental? Um, it is it is not much market. It is also like the best you can do is get an Airbnb or a BRBO. And once you get there, it's basically where I'm at. Tennessee is one of those communities that is all about who you know, and it's about just getting touch and go, basically. Uh, there is some uh, Facebook groups. Uh, there's one good Facebook group. It's called mm -hmm. the Pedacy Post. Mm -hmm. That one, a lot of times people uh, post what is long term for short term. And everyone in Pedacy know each other. So but the best way is either join into that group and always secondhand corroborate with someone that you know in Pedacy because you never know. A lot of times in Facebook, we have scammers. That's like a crazy like sometimes. So better just go to Pedasi, get to Airbnb, this is Airbnb, and get to inspection around. And usually, sometimes some places are not even listed on any yeah. platform. It's really boots on the ground. Yeah, in, it's like in, you in go to area. a restaurant, you go to a grocery store, and there is a, a board, and there is a, oh, rental, for, rental, 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 and you just click the paper and just call and, hey, you got a rental. Yeah, we had a guest, um, Shay, <clears throat> two years ago. But she is a single woman that moving to Panama and she sent me an email today. Thank you so much, Rod. I got my the 
residency card and all that stuff. And she found a house on the beach just outside of Las Tablas. Like she is on the street. Uh, there, there's a street before the beach. So she has beach view. And she's paying $500 a month. And she found it by boots on the ground, a two bedroom wow. house. And she loves it there. Good and, for her. That's, you know, she's getting around. I, I, I gave her the information for all the different I bus, was bus routes. routes. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. But, yeah, yes, yes, exactly. And that's an amazing spot. Yeah. It's very Panamanian, mm -hmm. meaning weekends can be a little bit festive. Weekends, yeah, a little festival. Festive. Fun, you know? fun, fun. Fun, yeah. The, the Uerito is so close to Chitre, and Chitre is well known for party and one a very well Panamanian uh, slang as a parking. So the parking in Panama is doesn't mean to park your vehicle or a space you park the vehicle. It's a space when you gather with friends, get some beers, get some music, and it dancing in whatever party is it. Okay, we are ready for questions now. Who's got questions directly about real estate? Oh, what happened there? Real estate and rentals only right now, please. And they are... If you asked it already, or I'm not going to see it because it's in the other chat. Hi, Oscar. People are saying hi to you. Just a shout out to all those people from Calgary. Hi. Are you cold? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brad Clark says, hi, Sherry. I have your business card right here in my desk. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Martha is at what? Oh, that's Martha Vitovich is one of the owners. The um, she she's the boss, and Mike, her husband, works for her. Remember that <laughs> and of Inside Panama, and Martha runs the property management division. Yeah, you will Panama. get her contact information uh, as soon when this call ends. It'll come to your email. How is the fully furnished rental market? Is and like when you're renting. Like what percentage of homes would inside Panama rent that are fully furnished as opposed to unfurnished, Sherry? Oh, I would say about 99% are fully furnished. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Now, yeah, you know what? A lot of people come here and they set up the beautiful home for people and uh, they don't, especially if they're snowbirds themselves, right? They want that um, equipment and furniture here. So, yeah. yeah. Most of them are rented. Yeah. Perfect. Um, Martha, we answered that. Oh, no, a few more questions coming in. Come on. Delay. I think I need a new mouse, Oscar. I need, I want a new mouse for Christmas. Uh, it's coming can, Black Friday. Don't uh, worry. Can you look at rentals online? Um, you, you can. Inside Panama um, Real Estate or Inside Panama Property Rentals.com both have website with the rentals. If you're looking in Boquete, they go too fast to stay online. We're, we, we're going to give you after this call. I'm not going to sit here and list off phone numbers and emails of people. You get a full email of people with rentals that they, they, they usually do after Facebook pages and stuff like that because they can change it every day. Sam in um, Boquete has a great page. Yeah, she's awesome. She works really hard for our company. Okay, here we go. Can you talk about seeking out multiple real estate agents, do's, don'ts with conditions? And Sherry, also talk about this mystery, there's no MLS in Panama. <laughs> there is MLS in Panama, and jo yeah. Joanne Hatch does a wonderful job with MLS. Yes. Uh, you can go to realtor.com or point to homes and you will see her listings there. Um, so yes, there is definitely an MLS system here. Uh, do all agents use it? No. Uh, but Inside Panama definitely takes part in that. My um, theory on this, guys, is if you're looking to buy, if you're looking for a realtor, first find one that is a member of the MLS. Mm -hmm. And the MLS in Panama, just Google MLS Panama. It's called um, MLS Acobir, A C O B I R dot com. I know it's the weirdest website. But let's just Google MLS Panama. You'll see all the different agents and, um, you know, <laughs> in, in your area. Or if you're looking at a house, hey, I like that one. See if that agent's on the MLS. Don't play agents. It, it, it's not fair to them. 
you should have one real estate agent. They should be able to, if they're on the MLS, they should be able to get you into any listing. And it means there, there are people that have been on the MLS that are no longer, they've been removed for a reason. So they, they don't play well. Did, yeah, the sandbox. Did, did you want to add to that, Sherry? Yeah, exactly. Um, if it's an MLS listing by law, they any agent that has an MLS listing by law must be able to show that property. Um, there are some agents maybe that um, don't don't do that as well, or um, owners do not want to list it as an MLS listing. They want lots and lots of people or agents to list the property and to show the property. The problem with that is, is if you don't list a property on MLS, um, you're not getting as many points or viewpoints, right, to the property. So if it's not on MLS, it's, it's not going to be on realtor.com and it's not going to be on point two homes. So the owner is doing themselves a disservice because they're not getting it advertised as well as they could be. Yeah, if you're, if you're, we can talk to the people here that might be selling a home. Like if you're not on Point Two Homes, which is Canada's number one international site anywhere, if you or and Realtor.com, which is throughout Europe and um, Asia, I believe, yep. and the U.S., your, your home is automatically, if you're a member of the MLS and your agent is, your home's going to be showing on those sites, and that's very important to you. So let's get off. We beat that one. Um, oh, there we go. Volcan, three months. What's the going rate? Well, <laughs> that's called a short-term rental. Anything under yeah. six months here is a short-term rental. Pretty much. Negotiate with the Airbnb people. Most Airbnbs, um, now they've really advanced it, that they have long-term discount. If you contact them through the chat system, you can probably even get a better rate. There, it is always an option. It's Oscar's always an way. Airbnb. -er. I used to. Yeah. Not any longer, but yeah, it yeah. is. Uh, you can put a rate. Airbnb uh, listings, you have, uh, if you want to, but they had to put it for a week, rent it for weeks, for a month. They have a specific uh, discounts. And you always can reach out to the property um, manager or the owner and just work out a better deal. Yeah, and B&Bs are much more flexible too, right? So you go in there and you rent it for a week and you find a place um, to rent long-term. Um, mm -hmm. The B&Bs are much more flexible with their um, price point. Yeah. 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 Rental properties in Panama City with utilities included. You'll never find it because of the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. It costs $90 to run one air conditioner for 24 hours. If you're in a two-bedroom apartment, you probably have three. Some people like it 60 degrees all day. Some people don't mind. So you're never going to find all, all, all inclusive. It's always, it's typically garbage and water. You will find some places in the highlands that include everything because, you know, they know you don't have air conditioning. And so your electricity is going to be $25. So they just average that in. Some rentals will include internet, cable, but they won't include the the um, electricity. But if they do in uh, the cable, the internet, most of the time it's going to be the basic speed yeah, or the basic, basic package. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. Next, looking to buy land. How much does it cost to clear land? Can't answer that question. That would vary so much whether you have trees, brush, or grass. And where? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. If you're not living in a city like David and Boquete. Oh, Bo Boquete and Cornado. You really have amen amenities of interest. Not really a rental thing. Save these questions, guys, for the, I'm going to save this. I'm not going to delete this question. We're going to answer it in our next segment. Same with the price range for a car. <laughs> uh, we're a couple from Canada. We come in early January, stay two months. Can we find an apartment in Boquete? Well, first of all, not a lot of apartments in Boquete. You no. guys got uh, this is not Coronado. We don't have high rise units here. Yeah, um, it's either a house so there can be a small apartments, but for for January, start of January, February is gonna be if you wanna do it, just start looking now. Start looking book, now and booking still if you can 
have something. Yeah. Airbnbs, you might be moving um, yeah. two or three times, which is great if you're trying to explore the area. Yeah. You only got a suitcase with you. Mm-hmm. So they move around a little bit. But not many people rent, like to rent their houses for two months. So, so the few and far between. Okay. Guys, only only real estate rentals questions. Um, we got a lot of questions that we're gonna answer here. Any possible? Yeah. Uh, are there uh, rentals in David? What does the market look like? You guys, I know you guys are expanding all over the place here in Cherokee. I see you moved into Volcan recently. We absolutely did. And, yeah. and you do have some listings in that bead. Talk about the bead a little bit, Sherry. Give your wealth of knowledge about the area, the rentals. Like I see some beautiful North American style looking houses selling for $130,000, $140,000. And I yeah. see rentals for five, six hundred bucks for the same absolutely. thing. Yeah. But, uh, so the further us. away you get from Boquete, the um, better um, buck for your dollar, I suppose. David is very warm, and cool. unfortunately, uh, people find that it's too warm. <laughs> so uh, there, are, there are awesome deals in David, um, but the weather seems to be a hindrance for most expats, to be honest. Um, and we can find you some rentals in there. We have yeah. a couple of agents that work there, and uh, we'll absolutely be able to help people. Mm-hmm. Um, to, to rent a house with swimming pool, though. There yeah. is some neighborhoods that nice get yeah. to have a house with swimming pool. Yeah, yeah. We, have, we have a listing that's, um, I think it's just like 95000 or something, and it's uh, an expat community that's um, sort of little apartments. Well, not even apartments, because they're all single level, right? And um, it's, uh, I think it's called Del Sol, David De, De, De yeah. Sol. And yeah. uh, they're selling for... 95,000 to 125,000 maybe and it does come with the swimming pool and the units are quite nice actually as long yeah, as people are bedrooms, aren't they? Yeah. yeah as long yeah. as people like heat that's an awesome place to go same with Puerto Rico I love you guys I didn't know like I said I moved down here I'm in Vancouver I need a city Panama City's too big oh let's go to David and then the week I was here, I, I was doing. I finally started researching, and on, on the weathernetwork.com, it's the hottest city in Latin America. <laughs> so that actual fact. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you don't mind living in air conditioning and, and whatever you find, you might find a great. I, I have a friend from Canada. He lives here six months a year. Um, Sherry, he's lived here for his five years. He yep. does not use air conditioning. He loves it. Amazing. He never had air conditioning in his house. Uh, but it, it'll cost you in a two bedroom. Um, you're looking at two hundred dollars electricity a month to keep a house at seventy five degrees. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's David, but we still like it. Okay, we have a very long question. Hello there. Okay, we're gonna. That's a general one. We're gonna get into that. This is skipping. So maybe if I start from the bottom, what's the temperature in Boquete? Typically, this is an average, could be changed five degrees at any time, 65 at night, 75 during the day. Fahrenheit? Huh? Where will be that in Fahrenheit? That is Fahrenheit. Oh, 65, sorry. That's Most of the people same. here, are in, I, 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 I'm in bilingual when it comes to metric because I'm a Canadian. So, <laughs> yeah, so you're looking at 17 at night. Uh, yeah, 17 at night, 23, 24 during the day. Yeah, I think it was 24 today. Mm-hmm. We do get some extremes though, so it could go to 28. Mm-hmm. What are the rental prices in Bolchetti versus the beach? Bolchetti, they start at around 400 and go to 4,000. So maybe two thousand. No, twenty five hundred. Like four hundred. Actually, you can, you can get places about four thousand. Yeah. Get the easy. It it all depends what you're looking for. A starting rental in Bolchetti would be a studio for four hundred dollars, Panama style. Uh, a a nice rental. We saw one with the group today in Breezes would be eleven hundred for a North American style three bedroom home. Mm-hmm. Uh, a high end rental with North American stainless steel appliances, granite countertops, and like all the amenities at home. 
1800 25 stop me if i'm wrong yeah. sherry yeah i think um the sweet spot is about 1250 or so yeah uh, the sweet spot for most you, yeah. you know everyone likes something different i've lived in everything in the last few years i've lived from 400 to 800 to you know i'm i'm, I'm comfortable a lot of people wouldn't be comfortable the way i live uh some people want I don't even like granite countertops. I'm actually pretty against them. Um, <laughs> I have a listing in Lucero right now, and he wants uh, Lucero is a great golf course in Boquete, and uh, he's listing. He wants uh, twenty two plus or so twenty two hundred plus utilities, and it is has. That, is that the duplexes? Has, hmm? Is that the duplexes? No. 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 Okay. Hmm? no. Yeah. And then you, when you say beaches, the Coronado Beaches area, there's not a lot of Panamanian style, cheaper homes near the beach. It, it, you know, it's really developed there. So you're looking at a thousand plus for a condo. A thousand would be the lowest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guessing, yeah. And then Petite is not developed. So you can get a lot of Panamanian style, like built homes and stuff like that along the beach in the smaller towns for. 500 better see yeah there's, seven, there's, there's a small community and it's one is quite trending or famous it's called royce place and you can get houses royce place royce place right. that's what it's called yeah it's a community <clears throat> sorry and you can get houses starting at 900 uh two bathroom two baths some of them have a swimming pool the one with the swimming pool will be about 1500 very reasonable and within 10 minutes, uh, probably five minute drive to the beach. Mm. Like very, very close. Okay. Sherry, <coughs> I think we have hold questions now, folks. We're going to get into the general Q&A. We want to thank Sherry for being with us. And yeah, thank you so much. we wanted to introduce all you guys to her. She's been such an asset for our company for many, many years. Yeah. Uh, again, you will get an email after we end this call with all of Inside Panama's contact information, rentals across the country, real estate across the country. If you're just if you're a just thinking about, hey, I'm thinking about investing. Phone Mike. He's the owner, owner of the company from San Diego. Been here 15 years doing this. With, um, was in real estate in San, Di San Diego most of his life. Talk to him about what. Panama's like and what the markets are like. So thank you very much for joining us, Sherry. You, Sherry. Welcome to stay on the call. Sherry, welcome. You're welcome to go open a bottle of wine, watch a movie. You probably have it open already. <laughs> but um, I, I'm going to close your video stream and stuff like that. And nice turn talking to you. Off. Thanks so much for inviting me. I appreciate right. it. Ciao for right. now. Okay. All right, Sherry. Thank you so much. Okay. All righty, Oscar, you and I are back. We got, okay, you guys take this the way, based on all the questions I've read, this is going a couple ways. It's going cars and pets. You know how many questions we had in pets and cars? But I think we should just go back through them. And the other, we want to meet some of you folks. You know, there's over 100 people on here. Like, please, now, how do we meet you? Now, if we, if you go to the chat, like not the key one, right? If you click on the public chat down on the bottom, right where you would type in your question, you see the happy face. Click on the happy face and then click raise hand. And that will put a little marking beside your name that we'll see, hey, you want to come on and be just like Sherry. Show us your picture, show us your face um, and ask us a question live and chat with us a bit. We want to meet who you are. And there we go. We got people raising their hand. Now, we might bring on more than one person at a time. Please just follow our lead. And when we announce you, then you can talk. So your computer is going to say, hey, I got to um, turn on my mic and camera, which Stephen was quite able to do there. Hello, Stephen. Hey, How are you? Thank How's you it going? Time. Can you hear me? We yes, can sir, hear we can. You. Fantastic. What's the Sorry, it's a little dark here. Yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, oh, very grateful for your time here. Um, no I've already been an expat, uh, grew up in the States, but have been living in Mexico for three to four years. And I'm right. um, looking to 
potentially move here to Panama, possiblemente Costa Rica. And uh, I'm just excited to come on here and, and learn a little bit more about Panama. I've already done quite a bit of research and reading and been looking at weather. And um, so it's, it's helpful to get to talk to some experts like yourself. And I'm also considering the tour. So thank you so much for hosting. No, thank you for your no time problem. and joining. Yeah. You got any, um, again, in the email that you get and the follow up is our direct contact information. If you don't get your all questions answered on here, feel free. We answer all questions. We try to answer them within a day or sooner, typically. So we will answer you. Mm -hmm. Thank, well, thank you, you so very much, much Stephen. And we hope to see you down here sometime and hear more from you. Okay, que tengan bonita noche. Gracias. Gracias, mi hermano. Feliz noche. <laughs> all righty. Now we have TJ. How are you, TJ? Hi, I'm wonderful. How are you? Wonderful. Unbelievable. Oh, very nice to meet you. Nice um, to meet I you. am one of the folks that wants to know about bringing your pets. Also, ah. uh, also I want to find out, um, are there any um, restrictions about um, your home-based businesses and so forth from that area? Well, I am the pet guy, and I'm sorry to tell you that Panama has officially banned all pets. No, I'm kidding. You no. know. <laughs> we are the fun group, guys. We do, we do pet relocations all the time. We're actually, our company is involved in them because we want to bring our guest pets. We like we we, we help them. We yep. Oscar and I have met private jets at Devi. We arranged, I, I just met a couple today. I helped them bring their 180-pound dog here. Uh, just uh, it's it, beautiful. Bear is so happy running around his yard, bumping into things, breaking things. But yeah, no, we do pet relocations every single all, like all the time. It's okay. not that complicated. If you look on our website, retireinpanamatours.com, to search for pets, I tell people exactly how to do it themselves. Okay. Okay. Now, if your pet fits under the seat, less than 20 pounds in the bag. Or if it fits in cargo under 110 ish pounds, I can probably we can probably get him in, in in cargo. He can be on the same flight as you, mm -hmm. and the paperwork is laid out what to do. Okay. What we do, we offer a service for 350 dollars. We will walk you through the 45 day process before you get here, getting everything done, proofreading all the paperwork, notifying the vet. The vet's going to know your name before you even arrive in Panama. All your paperwork is going to be pre approved. The uh, home quarantine is going to be done. You're going to have the right shots, everything. So we help with that service. Again, retireinpanamatours.com. Send us an email from our contact form there, and we can help you with that service. Or just read the article on our blog. And okay. um, if you feel you can do it yourself, if you're not a total, if you're not really stressed out in your move, and you feel you can get all that paperwork done in ten days, yeah, yeah. The yeah, one, can one, be done. yeah, the everything that you can do uh, for yourself, you follow the steps that we will publish on our website. Please do the step as we mentioned. Yeah. Because uh, we always update in information. If you go to sometimes some other social media platforms, you're gonna find that all kinds of you get confused. So some people might tell you, oh, no, I did it this way. Some people might try to cheat some ways, but it, that, that never happened. So careful with that. And, and, and we have many clients that have hired us to do it in the end. They messed up the process because somebody told, oh, somebody told me to do this this mm -hmm. way because it was easier. Nope. Right. <laughs> don't get, for you guys moving here, use a relocation expert. That's all I say. Yeah. We had, I, I just had someone um, come here and they, once they got here, okay, now they want to meet with us. Okay, I have my birth certificate. I got it notarized. Like, well, you don't need that. You don't need, well, I read on the internet. I did. There is so much wrong, outdated inf information on the internet. There are some really, really bad lawyers um, in Panama. And um, so you're sending us. So you're sending us information in the email after the fact that has well, the- Yeah, I'm going to send you information, our website and all the real estate stuff we talked about. Mm -hmm. we, we, we do, we, we've been doing this for years. We, like I say, we do tours. We're going to, some of you are waiting on here. I'm going to announce very shortly two openings we have because we're sold out for six months like usual. But I have two, we, we're open to the last two spots in the February and March tour. 
and we're going to put those on sale tonight. And I know we got a lot of people here that might be interested in those. But on, on our seven day tour, you will be given all this information and every contact information and every business card of every qualified person in this country to help you make this move. But if you don't want to do a tour, we also have a lot of information on our website that will help you do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also okay, we offer services as a facilitate the, the process. Okay, I, I'm really interested in that. But the other thing that I wanted really to know is what about having your home based business? What what is that like there in Panama? Is I, I moved here with that home based home based business. Panama is a territorial tax system, and that means it, you only pay income tax in Panama on money earned from Panamanian sources. Okay. If any other money you earn from outside Panama, you don't have to tell Panama about. So okay. I was in Canada in 2010, my last tax filing, I, I owed 53% tax when I added all my provincial, state, civic, all, all, and, and I said, this is crazy. I am working for the government now, okay? So that's when I looked to moving. So I looked at the 12 territorial tax systems in the world, of which Panama's one, Costa Rica, Singapore, um, uh, there's several others that I wouldn't want to move to, but um, Panama was number one. So I moved here. And once I filed non-residency in Panama, because as a Canadian, we don't have to pay taxes after to Canada once we're a non-resident, I became tax-free in that business, in my home-based online business. Now, if you're running a home-based business that isn't online and you're, you're manufacturing and selling products in Panama, that's a whole different story. It all depends on what level you're doing that. If you're doing that to go to the Tuesday craft sale and sell it, mm -hmm. No one's going to care. But if you're doing that and you're selling product to the Panamanians, it's very easy to set up a corporation here and get legal. And tax rates are actually very reasonable in Panama. Like we okay. run this company, we obviously pay tax because this is a Panamanian business. Right, we right. don't, you know, we're not under a U.S. corporation or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll find out more about those kinds of things. Thank you so much. I appreciate you're your so well. help today. Thank you so much Have for joining day. us. Thank, Thank you. For you. Okay, we're going to get back to the Q&A portion. Okay, assistant's working pretty slick tonight, Oscar. I just got to get back to all the questions. And for you people that were asking questions there, I'll get to those in a second. Can I look at rentals online? We answered that. I thought I deleted some of these. I you apologize the for the, the waste one, of time. No, you have to go to the one you can see. No, okay, no. Price one. range for small new cars. Small new cars. Uh, the, the lowest is a compact, like something like a Picanto or Chevy Spark is about $12,000, dollars than the the knowing the ones I know. Uh small SUV compacts it goes from fifteen to eighteen thousand. Yeah, you really not talking about see Suzuki. much difference in prices between the US and here. Yeah. And the new cars. The new cars the same. The only thing is that the, the specifications of the cars that are being sold in Latin America are way different and oh, models are so way different than North America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, in Latin America we have an expression, you have the, the simple version of the full extras. The full extras is actually what you get in North America because it has all the full airbags, sensors, uh, leather seats. That's pretty much what you get. And you pay the highest price. Yeah. But some versions, some models, some brands don't even go there. They, they just have a good car, decent. They get you anywhere. They have airbags and, and depends on the model, depends on the need is when you start shopping. Mm -hmm. um, I always, I, I have a, a, been assistant to buy used cars. Sometimes I can assist to even, if it, for some reason the, con, the connection between buyer and the dealership is not clear, as we did for Colleen mm -hmm. and your husband, that they were trying to get a brand new car at the Ford dealership, and they were not just getting the, any, any way to connect to them. So they hired me, I went all the way, drove all the way to David, get to meet with the agent, talked about which options they have because they're looking for a Bronco or something like that. And they end up buying a brand new pickup truck. So I can do that in some exceptions, but the used cars, I offer this service and um, used cars, sometimes it's a better deal because when you buy a brand new, well, guess what? Well, as soon as you walk out of that dealership, 30%, yeah, <laughs> it's gone. 
unless you're going to keep that car for a while. Used cars are a great value here, guys, compared to the U.S. right now. Yeah. Because of the U.S. crazy stuff. Like, a lot of people assume since Panama uses $1 U.S. bills that we're tied to the U.S. economy. Mm -hmm. We're not, uh, unless all you buy is U.S. product. Um, so we did not go through that 8 to 10% inflation thing. We did not go through that shortage of vehicles and car parts and stuff like that. Uh, the, the cars we get here are not manufactured in the same plants as the cars that you get type of a thing, right? Or they're a different vehicle that couldn't go into your market. Mm -hmm. So we might be, a, a, a Ford might be built in Detroit. I don't know if it is or not, but the Ford for Latin America can't be sold in the U.S. It's a totally different car. Unless so, it's the full extras. Yeah, well, no, the Cadillac converter oh, yeah, yes, and all yes, that yes, stuff. Yes, you're yeah. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so um, used cars are a great price here. That one two year old is, or one to five year old is Oscar's specialty. Yeah. Uh, it depends on your find. need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends on your needs and where you're going to live. I uh, will always do in a, a sermon assistance about what would be the best for you. Very right good. Okay, let's move on to the next question. What is the best way to move? Our stuff, including, well, your stuff is typically shipped on a container. Mm -hmm. um, there are several companies. If you want recommendations, I don't typically give these. Well, yeah, Canal Movers, Panama, uh, sorry, Mexico Movers, uh, pa um, Panama Relocation Partners is our favorite right now. Uh, but I'll give you these personal introductions to these people. If you go to retireinpanamatours.com, you know who we are. Most of you do and just fill out the contact form um but are you going to move your car why oscar uh unless it's your baby it's a gto classic yeah, or something 69 gto yeah it's a baby it's your baby move it the market otherwise, in the states is so high sell it yeah otherwise it's just uh you end up paying so much for the tax the transport the the importation process the weight and everything and it's Sometimes it's not even worth it. It's Container worth it. shipping is ridiculous now. The, we used to be able to move a car for three thousand dollars from yeah. Florida. Yeah, and, and all, even anymore. though, yeah, even though if it's your baby, let's say you bring in a, a something unique, you have to think ahead. What's gonna be? What's gonna cost for you to plan ahead for the maintenance? Because uh, people here do not work in some cars. Yeah. So okay. yeah, unless you know, or some U.S. cars. If you're on, there's a lot of myths online. If you come on a pension adult visa. They, a lot of people say you don't pay tax. Not true. You don't pay duty. Mm -hmm. You're going to pay 12% tax on the value that they assess on your car, not you. Okay. If it's a luxury car, it's worth way more money than it actually is. Mm -hmm. Okay. It always happens. If you're not on a pension adult visa, you're going to pay somewhere in total between 20 and 28% on the value that customs here puts on your vehicle. That's what it's going to cost you to get it out of customs. And that includes that like, we have a 7% tax here, like a VAT or state tax, whatever you call it. There's uh, another 5% import of a car, and then there's duties. Yep. So it's usually not working. Uh, a lot of people like all their personal stuff, so they do get a 20-foot or 40-foot container. Prices can range anywhere between ten and $30,000, depending on where you're shipping it from. Yep. Well, but, shipping up for vehicles will be from Evergreen, Florida. Yeah, yeah, vehicles are for sure. But mm -hmm. they used to be, I remember, there was $2,500, $3,000. I know people are paying $8,000 just for the freight portion. Yeah, I know. Because Crazy. of the shortage of containers. Crazy. In the US because everyone is building homes with those containers. That's why. <laughs> if not living in the ex Patriots. expatriate, sorry, you, you're saying, you spelt that right. I'm saying it wrong. Centers of Panama, can you possibly live with rudimentary or little Spanish? So if you're out in the boondocks, if you're in Las Tablas, you can. Mm -hmm. Actually, you can. It's all about if you're that motivated to do so, you will. Because yeah. it's all about the right attitude. It's all about knowing the basics. I was in a situation, and me as a Spanish speaker, I was in a situation uh, and mingling with North Americans, and I need to, for instance, get a job, right? So I always suggest people here to move into Latin America, not just Panama, anywhere in Latin America, get your basic knowledge, like numbers. Numbers are numbers. You can negotiate. If you understand in Spanish the numbers from one to thousands, you're good. 
Also, the basic greetings, uh, how you greet in the morning, afternoon, uh, always the right attitude, and uh, former uh, verbs or sentences to formulate questions mm -hmm. so you can get things done. Once you have that done, it's just practice, just emerge in the culture, and then it, it gets done. People, and, and, you and, have learned a lot. And folks, you know we have technology. <clears throat> uh-huh. There is Google Translate app also. Okay. You show it? Hello, how are you? You guys do know we have technology. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Like, yeah, there is some uh, also new apps. There is actually, I uh, saw so the new apps transforming, uh, translating different languages, yeah. not just English, Spanish. I, I've lived here 11 years, and most of you who know me know I'm not fluent in Spanish. I cannot have conversational Spanish whatsoever. I know several thousand words I can get by. Last week, I'm, I'm actually moving back to the rentals thing. I negotiated a deal with a wonderful Panamanian couple, Guadalupe and Francisco. Um, usually I have Oscar with me when I need stuff like that, but I, it, this was a spur of the moment thing when it happened. I spent 45 minutes with them. We convert, they, they did not speak one word of English and I'm not conversational Spanish. So through Google translate and doing what I just showed you there, we got by it and signed a lease and mm -hmm. everything was fine. Lauren. Yes. Oscar can help you buy a car. Oscar at retire in Panama tours.com. Or yes. just go to retire in Panama tours.com, fill out the form, and we will get you right to Oscar. Okay, I don't know what that is. Okay, we're just plowing through these questions, Oscar. Okay, that's one we answered. I always forget to, to delete the question. Isn't yeah, it? it is because your employees, so these ones are the ones you need to go. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. No, it's just, it's got a red X there. That should make it go away. You have to pay first month and last month and security. The The typical has been first uh, first month, a deposit equal to the monthly rent. So I have, I'm just moving out of the place where I had to pay the last month. And that was the first time it's happened to me in Panama. And I've heard of a couple people doing it. Mm -hmm. Not very common. It's typically first month and deposit equally the amount of the rent. And if you have a pet, they sometimes ask for a pet, depo pet deposit on top of that. I just want to handle payment of rental deposits such without a bank account. Well, you're going to have to typically do it in cash. Dan, hey, Dan, is Dan Jample. And um, you're going to have to do it in cash um, unless your landlord is from the U.S. and then you have a U.S. bank, then you can do that all Easy. the money transa transactions in the U.S. However, you need to get your bank account set up, Dan. Like, really, get a hold of us. You don't have that. I remember idea. what we said about the payment online. If you, if you, unless you know, well, yeah, you need to know them for sure. And the yeah. rent, yeah, verify first. Yeah, yeah, there's many things. Oscar's so right there. Don't get scammed, okay, guys. If you are in the house and you are renting the house and you have the proper ID of the other person, like if, if you don't know them, just don't give somebody money. Mm -mm. There has been several scams going around. Panama City is big for them. Uh, even up here in Bolchetti, where uh, there was a recent one, Leslie called him out. There was a guy renting properties that looked really, really good, too, too good to be true, taking deposits from multiple people. So just be careful there, guys. Know your rentals people. Get an agent like um, we just met earlier, like find someone that, that can help you. But as far as if you're going to rent from a Panamanian, you want a Panama bank account because I don't, like, when I rent from a Panamanian, I don't, well, I have for years, I don't worry about rent. I set my bank account, my Panama bank account to send them X number of dollars on a certain day of the month. And then rent's always paid. If you don't have a bank account here that, you got to, you know, go to the ATM, withdraw $250 as many times as your bank allows it and pay excessive fees. So just get the um, uh, bank account set up. If you still need help with that, Dan, let me know. Okay. Yes. We got a big question here. Hello, thanks. My goal for me and my girlfriend 
is for 5,000 meters squared. If you're looking for a property, that's just over an acre, not seating gated, between Valley de Anton and Bocchetti and Volcan. Oh, noise pollution, air pollution. Well, all those places don't have any no real, real noise pollution besides chickens and stray dogs. No air pollution. They, they all have local food markets. Like Valley de Anton, uh, Bocchetti, Volcan. All have. They right all have everything markets. you're talking about. The right. most expensive for land, like if we're looking for 5,000 meters. Is all the Valle Antonio is going to be expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Valle Antonio is prime. It's yeah, it is really because expensive. that's where all the wealthy Panamanians yes. have their, their weekend homes. It's very expensive. Volcano is going to be expensive too. Land in Volcan is, it is a lot more like affordable. You can get some great deals. And more there. quiet. Yeah. It is so quiet. probably Volcano might be for you. It's and, all depending also like all the Japanese. Insects. Uh, you are in the tropics. There are insects everywhere, guys. Yep. Anywhere mm. you have grass, uh, anything like a bushes, you can expect lots of bugs, insects, depends on the altitude, possibly snakes, possibly quarries, possibly monkeys. Yeah. Steven, recommendations, two hours from Boquete and David, lots of hiking nature. Well, you mentioned the three of them there, mm -hmm. but they're all wet. Mm -hmm. This is a tropical climate. You're going to uh, be wet. But don't forget, in the tropical climate, it typically rains in the afternoon. Yeah, you can so you still, still do a hiking in the morning. Yeah. The best yeah. way for you to, to know which of those areas are best is you need to feel it. You need to come down here, get on the ground, and it comes, and it comes in the worst time of the year for weather. So you know what to expect in the worst time of the year. Because looking out for that is like a looking at uh, you trying to buy a car. You can read the book about the car. You can know everything. But until you drive the car, you know how it feels. Yeah. That's always the best way I explain it. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were still talking, Oscar. I was setting up our... No, I was just entertaining while you were distracted with something else. I don't know. I am setting up the sale of our two tours that I promised. Oh, so you're going to talk about Bocas. Bocas. Yes. Uh, Bocas, it is a gorgeous island. It is fun. It depends what are your needs for facilities, amenities, uh, medical attention. Um, it can be very challenging. Bocas is an island, so you don't have quality of fresh water. It's all, mostly of the places uh, run on rainwater for facilities. The, the aqueduct of the water services, it is not proper. It's an island, so it is not, it is not like that best way for that. So, and also Bocas, they run the whole electricity um, and the whole services with a big giant generator. It works on diesel. So there is ways you can get around so it is for people, they want to live long term, they, they, they want to have fun, they also are adventurous, and you have to plan ahead. Because Bocas is an island 30 minutes on a boat ride outside of Almirante, which is the nearest town in the province. But you can fly easy peasy from Bocas to Panama City and about 45, almost 50 minute flight with Air Panama. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have if a budget is not a problem, you just want, okay, I want to plan my, my, uh, my dentist, whatever, in Panama <coughs> City, just fly Panama City. Eventually, it's going to be some flights from Bocas to David. Yes. It used to be, but not now, not now right now. <coughs> but that can be another option. Let's take this get back. <coughs> exactly. Okay. So that's my thought on Bocas. Okay, I got a couple of rod questions, guys. I mm -hmm. really need a little bit more water, if you mind. And you're yeah, you're yeah, on the sure. inside. I can't get out this side. We have it. I'm sending Oscar. Oh, you, oh, you forgot yours, Oscar. I'm sending Oscar to get me water because I can't get out on my side. Okay. Um, how much does a house rental in Bocchetti cost? Again, I think we, we've been through this, David, depending what you're looking for. $400 is going to be basic. $300 for maybe a, a one room. I currently live in a um, three bedroom, two and a half bath duplex, two story, uh, modern, like five years old. 
unfurnished and I got it for 800. He's asking nine now. Um, so it, it really, really varies. Um, Oscar lives in a beautiful four bedroom, two bath home. It's an older home. It's built probably in the 1970s, but it's all wood, like even inside, which is very unusual in Panama. And he pays around seven. Uh, but you can pay if you want North American style, you're looking at 11, 1200. Here is, I'm your secretary. Thank you. Thank you. I'll sit on the outside next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, a lot of you keep, I keep deleting the questions. We want um, um, Sherry's information. It's coming. Be patient. At the end of this, when we hit, like this, this is automatic. I've already pre written all the information because uh, Inside Panama has a lot of divisions throughout the country and a lot of people. So you're getting their contact information. You're getting the contact and an email from us about how to get a hold of us. And officially, right now, there are two spots available on our February 2nd tour and our March 2nd tour. That's yes. Okay. And I, I just put them for sale. And ignore the fact that a couple only, it's a couple of singles. You, you'll see your options are there. And if any of you guys want to take them, please do. I actually um, deleted the QA. Just to add on it, if for some reason you don't want to do a group tour, or want to be part of the group tour, we also offer private, custom, personal tours. Yeah, and we can uh, we can make it um, custom about your needs, specific areas of Panama. Um, so we always make it happen, and we work very good because you know to make it more personal attention. Perfect. Electric electricity rates are the same throughout the country, basically. Um, they are different for farms. If you're on a thinker, you get a cheaper rate than if you're in a residential neighborhood. If you have a pension adult visa, you get a 25% discount. Um, electricity is not cheap here, folks. Um, it's not crazy. There's some U.S. states that are actually higher than us, but we're about 16 cents a kilowatt hour. So it is what it is i know texas is about 12 but there are some northern states uh, that are in the same range as we are well so i found electricity here uh, cheaper than, than, Pano, than costa rica oh really yeah it, it is cheaper costa rica is about 25 cents right now yeah it's cheaper come on spain is i talked to a guy from spain we're on a zoom with them uh, uh of a group moving here and they're paying 35 cents a kilowatt hour mm -hmm. we're 16 they're 35 you yeah. couldn't believe what we paid for electricity. We in in I'm an electrical hog. I'm sorry, I am. I you I have many computers, I have smart home devices, I got and my electrical bill sometimes goes it actually hit fifty dollars once this year. And I don't get a pension out discount. Oscar, I think your landlord is it's under your landlord's name. So yeah, you, you have a pension out discount. So he's paying like 25, 30 bucks. I, I the most I pay is 45. What's the best time of year to move to Panama? Anytime that is not Panamanian holidays. Yes. And there is no independence holidays, Christmas holidays. But if you're renting, the best time for you to move is May, June, July. Between August. May, between May and November. Yeah. That Pretty way much. you're gonna find the 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 even best April. Rentals even holiday. April. April to November is the best. You you find a lot of options. Okay. Of being able to run your business online to other countries, TJ. Yes, that is. Oh, I, oh, we asked. Yes, that was TJ that came oh, yeah, live. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we answered that question. Any of those questions, guys? Uh, please um, reach out to me. I've done it before. I've run an online business here. What? Oh, no, I just wanted to see how many people have their hands up. Anyone want to put their hands up? Feel free to, and we'll answer more of those questions. It's always nice meeting people just so many questions average cost per square foot to build great question daryl you're looking between 60 and 120 right now that's right from our builders who are currently building property yeah Sorry, with maybe 130. decent average for mm -hmm. something that is not so high end 80 90. Yeah, days, mm -hmm. you know in, with in 80 90 you get a good yeah. quality home 
Now I go, whoa. Yeah, with 130, you're importing the marble from Italy, okay? Yep. So, you know, that's basically um, the line. And that's per square foot, by the way. Yep. So, again, we're talking imperial measurements. Thanks for the answer. You're welcome. Boom, boom, boom. Do you know where El Banco is, Oscar? No, but I will look it up right now. El it's Banco. near Route de Sur. Route, that doesn't answer anything. No, I know. <laughs> that's, that's a big Route de Sur. So we can't answer you yet. We will look it up. And it is wine time for TJ. Yes. Coffee. Well, yeah, sure. El Banco, no, doesn't say anything. So I have, you have to be more specific. It's probably something else. Something else. Can you talk about cost of oh Daryl? Yes, we already cost the bill sixty to one thirty. Uh, where did you list that, TJ? Um, I don't understand the question, TJ. If you want to put a new one in, um, talk about pets. We talked about pets. Pet, you know. Again, I'm going to do this for you guys, pets. Take a look at this article that I wrote. I'm going to put it over in the chat about moving your pets. Now, let me be honest with you. It's not for the faint of heart because it's really um, a lot of, but it's comprehensive here. This is exactly how to do it. I'm not hiding anything. So I just posted it in the chat. Feel free to click on that link and... Yeah, click on that link and read how to move your pets here. COVID restrictions. You must wear a mask if you're in a hospital or on public transit. Uh, that's it? Yeah, medical establishment. And they, and they mostly is a medical hospital. Which, uh, which I hope they always do. Yeah. Yeah. I was in, last time I was in a hospital, it's been many, no, many years, is when Noah was born, where mm -hmm. I was running you guys down. I had my mask on. I felt so much safer. I'm, I'm in a hospital around all these sick people. I don't want to not wear a But mask. you know, even the public transportation is now 100% mandatory. It is advice. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. advice. There are no COVID restrictions left here. Just only um, for, well, for for hospitals yeah. or any... In, in any yeah, in hospitals. That's and, it. It's the only place. Okay, what are rental prices for Boquete versus the beach? Been through that question. I missed that one. Are there certain area of Panama City where LGBT expats are located and living? I would say there's no hot spot. There's no, no. young young street. Um, of, that's Toronto. No. There's no. There's nothing like that. Um, it's all spread out. It's like. Like Elk and Greyho, possibly, because that's where most of the clubs are in that area. But besides that, no, there's no, you know, Panama's come a long way in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. They now have gay pride parades that the yeah. mayor actually marches in um, every June. So they have that. There is no rights here. There's no marital rights. If you're coming here, you have to get separate visas and, and the whole thing. But we can't be far behind because Colombia has gay marriage. Um, Costa Rica now has, has um, gay-friendly unions. So, you know, that that process is coming along. And we support it. We, we've had many gay couples come on our tours and move here. Yeah. And yeah. show here. And it's been great. Mm -hmm. Great friends of ours. Mm -hmm. What is the temperature in the V? Right now, I don't know. No. Boiling, boiling like, honestly, <laughs> boiling. <laughs> boiling yeah. eggs sometimes. Nine, 90 to 100. 95. 90 to 100. Yes. Would be the average for a yeah. Uh, when it's cloudy, 90. So, like, we're talking 33 to 37, guys, for your Celsius people. Yeah, in the evening, it drops to 70. No, well, now, it's like, Probably 70, 80. like 75 to 80. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it never goes below eighty in the view, uh, like it seems. Yeah, you get you have you got better weather and in the evening, the late afternoon, in between the windy season, which we have oh, a lot of winds. Did. Yeah. Looking for info on two tours available. Oh, retire in Panama Tours.com. 
Go. Retire in Panama Tours.com. We have and just TJ. posted. Oop. Okay. Yeah, but I have to make it live yet. Sorry. <laughs> it's it, it's live there now. I just looked. It just went live. Retire in Panama Tours.com. Okay. Can you guys hear the music in the background? Remember, Latin America, people like to play the music. They have dogs. Your neighbor could move in with 75 chickens. There's nothing you can do about it. So if you're going to move here and live here, you have to accept some things. I had a call from someone who bought land and built in Balkan eight years ago, and he's never had a neighbor. It, there's been a build a house there, but no one's moved in. Well, a Panamanian fam, family moved in with about 75 chickens. And if you do the math, you got 75 chickens, you got 10 roosters. Um, they go from 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. They, they nonstop. Yeah. And he wants to know what can be done, what police force can be brought in to solve this. Nothing. Absolutely. Nothing right. you can do because it is a private mm-hmm. property. Yeah. So. And it's, he, how, it's probably should, how they make their living on selling eggs. Yeah. He should have done is buy the big property and build the house in, yeah. in, the, in the center and build all around. Yeah. Then you block the noise. That could be the answer for them. I do well, know well, one one person who ended up paying the family like $100 a month for the rest of their life. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We talked about cars and how... We're just getting to the end here, guy. Medical clinic to get a blood test, physician, Elkin Grejo. Yes. Uh, Plenica Einstein. Highly recommend. I've used them personally myself through several situations when I lived in Panama City. They are on Via Argentina, one block east of um, Arocha. I, I couldn't figure out it was east or west, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, I hope that helps you, Bill. Good news on the cars. Oh, Chevy 454 truck. Bet that will get some attention. Hey, there we go, Jim West. You got a a 90 Chevy, and that's nice. And the great thing about that value is typically the customers don't always look at the vehicle. They might value that as five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get away with some cheap, cheap uh, customs there. <laughs> but what 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 I mean by they don't value like you can't declare a value. We've had problem with people coming in here. I'm gonna drive to Panama with my Winnebago. Yeah, okay. They get here, they find out that Panama isn't RV friendly. We don't have campgrounds. We don't really have stuff like that. And if you, the, the customs guy at the border, oh my God, you have a house that's on wheels. This has got to be worth a lot of money. And it, it was a 1975 Winnebago. Uh, <laughs> so you got to be careful. There are Panama City. I, I lived there again in the beginning of my career where I virtually knew no Spanish. Yes, you can get it by you, without English. You might get frustrated at the dry cleaner. Uh, you, that's why you need to learn, it like depends. Oscar said, it, it, your numbers, your mm-hmm. days of the weeks, like learn greetings, all those, greetings, and always the, have just memorize a, that. And always have a, the best attitude because remember you're in Panama. Morning, afternoon, because if the dry cleaner uh, says uh, "Martes por la tarde," mm-hmm. you, you need to understand he means come back on Tuesday in the afternoon. Yeah, like it's that's simple. You don't have to speak Spanish to know those words. So learn yeah. those words. Those basic learn the words and also as, accepting of the the Latin American way or the Panama way. With tomorrow, that doesn't mean it's gonna be tomorrow. Yeah, mañana means not today. Uh huh. Not means not tomorrow. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. Tiny houses. There's been some stuff Getting happening there. here. Not as um. You know, big as the U.S., but a lot of Panamanian homes are already tiny houses. That's a good one for you, Roddy. What is the latest recommendation for a VPN? <laughs> I recommend one VPN only and one, and that is Surf Shark. Google it. Surf Shark. It's number one for unblocking streaming programs like Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, 
What do you use? Disney, ESPN, Disney Plus, ESPN, yeah. Fox. Uh, and the best thing I love about it, I just took the plunge. I bought two years subscription. It was fifty four dollars, like two dollars and eighteen cents a year. Uh, sorry, a month. It's just, and and it works so good. They got such good reputations. So Surf Shark is the VPN. A lot of people say, "What is that?" Well, if you're gonna watch U.S. entertainment on your Fire Stick or your smart TV, you're gonna want a VPN installed on that device so you can get the U.S. versions. Um, because the Panama Netflix has about half the content of the U.S. Netflix. You cannot watch Amazon Prime down here without a VPN. And what a VPN means, it makes you look like you're somewhere else on the internet. And it's great to use if you're using public Wi-Fi. Like if you go into a shared Wi-Fi uh, situation uh, or in coffee shops, because you can't be hacked with it. Oscar, what have we got there? Can you speak the culture of Panama versus David? Are uh, these cities, suburban areas, or rural culture. areas? Can you speak culture. to the culture climate of Bo Oh, yeah, okay. Culture so, climate. Ignore the word climate. The culture of Boquete versus David. Uh, what can I say about that? Um, Boquete is a small town. Therefore, a lot of Boquetenos are um, different mindset versus David, which is basically a city. It's almost 200,000 people city. So David is more, get it going. Boquete is more tranquilo. Yeah. Um, it's about relationship in Boquete more than David. David is more aggressive. David is more, people are more like, uh, just say how it is. Not much of the politeness, I uh, found out. Boquete yeah. is, is more like about relationship, the politeness is more conservative versus David. That's the best way how I can explain yeah. that. Elaine, uh, like they, they have suburban and rural areas, both both places. But uh, here's a good explanation. The people from David come to Boquete to um, hang out in the, in the culture in the cultural events like the uh -huh. festivals yes. uh, and yeah. also for the weekend getaway yeah okay no heat okay we are almost done these questions guys it is i just want to the tours retire in panama tours.com no problem traveling with your prescriptions. Don't bring more than three months of a supply of any one prescriptions. Try to keep mm -hmm. them in the bottles. You can. Volcanoes. Well, we live next to a volcano. It's just out the window here, actually. Yeah. Last um, time it erupted was 700 years ago. The people said they erupted every 700 years ago. Yeah. Oops. We do get earthquakes. We had an earthquake. Too. I um, didn't feel that. You didn't. It was a six. Sorry. Yeah, it's six point three. When? In um, you were you were on tour for for how long? Like a second? No, it was like thirty seconds, Oscar. Really? No, it was last month. I phoned your wife to, right after it happened. Huh. Just make sure everything was okay. We like they're not. It's really weird. There, there was an earthquake over in Asia, a six point three today that killed many people. Like not hundreds. Like, like killed a few people here they just don't like it wasn't close enough to yeah. land it was way out in the pacific no Ocean. but with the volcano with the volcano is is uh it's dormant it's no extinct volcano um we the most like what say six point that's very unique usually three point four point and very sporadically through the year yeah there's earthquakes every day like ones and twos and threes we get about two six you know, fives or sixes a year on the average, I would say. Yeah. 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 So, but nothing that's, I've, I've been here 11 years, 13, nothing that's caused injury no, to anybody. Nothing. It also panicked to people. Okay. In the U.S., 250, you can form a corporation, file, get, get a divorce. <laughs> Why are Panama to file a few papers which you can provide you a credit and then? I'm not, I don't really understand, like you're not specific enough DJing your question. You have to remember a lot of the times when Pan no, Panama corporations are charging you includes the fees that they have to pay the government. Like 
tacit unicas and um, stuff like that. So if you think your lawyers are a cheek, my God, like I, I, like if I was on a stage and one of the least reviewed, I, you think I could get that for forty dollars? I can't here. Um, so that's all I got to say there. We have a cat. Okay, let's take a quick peek. Uh, if anyone wanted to raise your hand, okay. How are you people? Is there anyone left on the call? Uh, there's still 80 of you left on the call. So uh, that wants to ask a question, remember how to raise your hand. You go down where you type a chat, you click on the happy face, and then you raise your hand. And we're going to get the last questions in because this call ends in four yeah. minutes. We we'll need to go to the pharmacy. It was great. I'm sorry, Oscar. Mm-hmm. Talking to you guys all. I am putting right in the chat right now. We're done with the Q&A portion. A contact us. Oh, Krista wants to. So right in the bottom of the chat, contact us. Click on us if you want to send us any more questions. Krista, why don't you join us? You're going to have to accept permission to for your microphone and your, um, sorry, and your video. Video. Thank you. And we got Lauren. You're going to need to accept permission for your microphone and your video. Okay. Please join us. Come on now. That was a good call. A lot of questions. Yes, sir. We're seeing this, you know, the more questions, the more interest there just seems in Panama. You got to mm-hmm. going, 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 which is great, which is why we're here and trying to answer. Has anyone booked one of those tours yet? Well, we still have plenty uh, options for next year. There we go. Hi, Crystal. How are you? Hi, Crystal. I'm, I'm good. Hi. I'm just wondering if it's um, if you would recommend if I came for a month to visit and then check out the places that I may consider retiring to. Yeah. Or yeah, for sure. Like, like it. First of all, decide on your climate I, i'd ability. like to be i'd like to be close to the ocean yeah so if you want to be close to the ocean where is she going to go uh coronado pedasi yeah uh david but also you you need to um realize anywhere you close to the ocean you're pretty much going to be sea level which is going to be high temperature all year round yeah you will need to have probably an ac unit because it's going to be hot and very humid Okay. Yeah, all year round. Panama's hot and humid all year round. All but year round. nowhere in Panama can you live where you're not less than a couple hours from the ocean. Mm-hmm. So okay. like, everywhere you live, you're like we're an hour and a half from the ocean. Yeah. And also another thing, if you wanted to live by the ocean, but you don't can stand too much of the heat, but you still want to be there. If you buy a house renting, make sure you have generator in case. You lose power, yeah. so you have a generator for the, your AC unit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's very, okay. very... Uh, how, far is, is, how far is David from Coronado? Uh, six hours drive. Yeah. Six hours drive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I will see what the deal is on the tours that you have, that you're going to set, that yeah. you're going to mention later in the... In yeah, the, yeah the, the, the tours are available now. It's at retireinpanamatours.com. <laughs> I just put Do the you have a different in. rate for singles versus couples? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Singles are 2400 and couples are 3900 Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So, so and what is what does that all include? Our tours are all 100% all inclusive once you get here, except for your own personal shopping and alcoholic beverages. So it's seven nights traveling in, in the vehicle for all those days, all your hotels, three meals a day. And okay. you will meet with all the experts. You will meet with lawyers and insurance agents and, and rentals people to show you around. So you'll leave with a Rolodex of people. And it includes the after, after tour support. If you decide to move here, we're here for you. Just like, for example, yesterday. I was at the airport at 7.30 in the morning to pick up one of our clients. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Thank you so much. You're yeah. so welcome. All righty. Thank you very much, Crystal. And you have yourself a wonderful night. 
and we had invited um, Lauren on the call. Lauren, can you make it? You're going to be the last speaker because we're going to have a countdown to end him. All right, folks. How much does it cost for house home help? Uh, you're looking at about three to four dollars an hour. Um, I can't like the questions are just coming, coming in. We're going to have to, um, I'm going to read them all. It's medical marijuana available. Not yet, but soon it's been approved. They just have to figure out how to distribute it. So uh, two, three, four or five years. What do you yeah. Know? Yeah. Again, we're behind Columbia again and behind Costa Rica a little bit. So that will come. All right. Folks, yeah. it's been a great night. Thank you so much for all of you to join tonight. We kindly appreciate your time, your support to our uh, business, and also today for the great, honest, sincere uh, information we got to offer to you and provide. Um, looking forward for the next Q&A. What is going to be our next Q&A? Actually, we are going to make some, we might have a surprise Q&A okay. in December. All right. Uh, because we had our huge healthcare Q&A where we had 400 people registered on that one and our doctor ended up with appendicitis that day. Mm. Could you imagine? And she's agreed to do another one with us. Beautiful. And so we might move forward with that and, and then maybe have another guest. And then we're going to introduce the new special Q&A lineup for 2023. That's coming very shortly. All right. Then. So you guys, all you Q&As folks. Every month. Yeah, all you folks, stay tuned. Keep following us and, and checking our emails, checking our social media, and uh, we'll give you those announcements for the surprise Q&A very shortly. Exactly. Also. And don't forget <laughs> to send us an email if you got a question. We do answer. Yeah, and do not forget, we are the real Retire, Retire in, in Panama. Panama. Just because that's our legal name. That's actually. our legal name. <laughs> all that's- right, folks. You have a great night. Enjoy it. And hope to meet you all in Panama one day. Hashtag happy aspect in Panama.